Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Sci-Fi Watcher as we talk about the Twilight Zone again this week on a Wednesday. I'm Corey Shred. Mr. Brian Lee is joining me. Brian, how is it going? Hey, Corey. Good to be here. Yes, it is. So we got another new episode to talk about. We are halfway through the season, and let's get into the wonder kind, the wonderkind. 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 From episode five of this first season, April 25th, 2019, written by Andrew Guest. Directed by Richard Shepard and starring John Cho. Cool. And John Cho is, uh, I didn't write down what he is, but he basically helps candidates. He's like a, I wonder if they call that. He helps people, like people's. He's uh, a campaign manager. Campaign manager. Thank you. My English no good. English no goody. And I guess there was a crappy president in office. Mm-hmm. unpopular president he turned supposedly turned him around and was going to make him the greatest comeback in history and the guy doesn't win right and that was uh i forgot to write down his name but he was in like a uh, night court john larroquette john larroquette paid played the president who was trying going up for re-election and i and, and i love the fact and, and that's the one thing i like about this being on cbs all access is there's language they can use you know no problems. And I love the fact that yeah. he's, the, he's just swearing up a storm. Right, right. And, and it is a bad sign when you lose the state that you live in. That was kind of funny, yeah. He's like, I lost New York and New Jersey, and I'm from New Jersey. He's like, yeah, that's a bad sign. Not good, yeah. No. Definitely not good. It's going to be a one-term joke, and of course, five, you know, five, you know, like years later. Oh, no, because the guy wakes up. Because the uh, the guy, um, oh, he's got a str- a, a unusual name, Raf. Raf Hanks wakes up like somewhere, like it looks like a hospital or something like that. And we're like, what, "What's going?" Right? On? Yeah, we're we're like, "Where? Where is this? Is this in the present? Is this in the future? We don't know at this point." And then we find out five years late earlier. This is when he helped that president lose, and he basically he's a washed up campaign manager. He's washed up. You know, cut to scenes of him in a bar. Mm-hmm. And he finds out where his about, where his book is a coaster. His book is a coaster. I thought that was kind of weird. It funny was though, kind of an insult. But I know he's a regular in the bar, and his book is a coaster. It's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> he probably left it there. Yeah. So there's new presidents in office for two years now. He's a joke. He's doing a crappy job. Which you know, we get presidents like that. And, mm-hmm. and then, like like all modern technology, they talk about some 11 year old kid racking up views on YouTube. Saying he wants to run for president, blah, blah, blah. You know, the usual stuff we hear. Right. And uh, Roth is thinking, like, this is his way to redeem himself. If if he could bring back or he could make a kid be elected, you know, it, it'll redeem himself, right? Right. He can do it. He's got – he's the wonderkind, whatever that means. It stands, it's German. stands for wonder child. He's the wonder child. He has a book. He had a book. No. Yeah. So he figures, you know, let's let's this kid's hot right now. Let's let's do it. Let's have him run for president. Yeah. Let's capitalize on this little kid. Of course, the question we all have is: you have to be thirty-five to be president. How can you run for president? Of course, his parents' names on the ballot, which a little bit of a stretch, but you got to mention it somehow. You got to mention it. Yeah. If they had not mentioned that, I would call BS the whole way. Yeah. But all right, you're not really. Okay, you're you're voting for the parents, you know. <laughs> right. And this kid's videos and people love his videos and he's so cute and he's making music videos and whatever whatever whatever. Mhm. But you got to let it ride. You got to let this yeah. ride. I mean, this is the way the world is. People love these videos. People go crazy over stupid YouTube videos. Yeah, it's kind of a a mirror on us. Exactly. Not a black mirror, but a mirror. <laughs> no, no, that's a totally different type of mirror. Um, I'm glad we get to like see the debate where he he screws up and he's just he's a laughing stock. It's because that you know it's going to happen, right? And uh, I thought that the show was over. I'm like, okay, where else can you go from here? You know? Well, it's because his dog Homer's got cancer and he wants to make a video. And of course, Raph is like, sure, go ahead and make a video. And he's like, wait a minute. Let's use this sick dog to our advantage. You know? Yeah. I mean, that, that makes sense. 
But I mean, in the parents though, I mean, you think the parents would give him a second chance like this? I wouldn't. I don't think I would. I just, I just didn't understand why they would in the first place. It's a little far fetched, but I'm gonna, like I said, letting it ride. It's the Twilight Zone. We have to. Yeah. So he makes this nice, touching video about his dog, and you know, then they, you know, they're going around the country, and he wins the Iowa caucus. Which, mm-hmm. which means he's, you know, kind of got a state behind him. And then fast forward, he becomes president of the United States. He becomes president with his, you know, uh, mother and father in tow. Mm-hmm. And uh, surprise, surprise, he's a spoiled brat. But I love the part where he goes in the office, he stands on the table like a normal brat. He sits down, he picks up the phone and says, bomb Russia. And he, the general looks at him, he's like, just kidding. Like, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I love that. I love that. Yeah, and, and and Wrath is finally just finally like, okay, what did I do? I created a monster, right? Mm-hmm. Kid wants everyone to have video games in their house, and they're like trying to say, well, you know, that's gonna be hard to do because it costs money, and the companies won't want to do it. And he's like, well, just tax them out of existence then. It's like, whoa, yeah. And also another foreshadowing moment. He says, you know, they came up to him. Is it later in, in another scene? They're like, can you take a physical? And he's like. I don't want any old doctors, only young doctors. So he wanted a law made for no old doctors. No old doctors. A little bit of foreshadowing there. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Well, then Raph is like more and more. He's like this. I need to change this. You know, I made a mistake. And the general, the general thinks he's talking about treason. Right. That was a scary moment when the general's like, Hey, He's our president. I got to do what he says. That's the way it is. We elected him. You know, what you're saying is treasonous. I know. It's like, don't use the T word, especially if you're in the White House. That's that's very dangerous to say. Yeah. <clears throat> and is it the next scene? Well, he talks to uh, his other advisor. And then he goes back and he tries talking to Raph again when he's playing golf. Well, he talk- well Raph talks to the mother, too. And, oh yeah, and yeah. She's yeah. like, she's like, no. Everybody loves him. He's so great. Why would I try to stop him? Yeah, but she's just riding his coattails, you know. Yeah, she's 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 in it. Mm-hmm. You know, she's oblivious. Then he goes. Then then he goes to talk to the pres the kid, the president, who's trying to to, to practice golf putting, which he sucks at apparently. Mm-hmm. And he he meant he heard that, and you know Oliver said he heard that Raph was talking about treason. Mm-hmm. And he sp- explains about the dog dying was all a lie just to get him to come back. It's like, ooh, you slippery little stink. Mm-hmm. And then he throws all the golf balls and like a couple of them go in. He's like, see, hole in one. And of course, Rafe, Raph says, no, that's not a hole in one. And the president screams, gun, there's a gun. And of course, the Secret Service are in there and they shoot Raph. And then he wakes up in that bed. Yeah. And he's bleeding because he's been shot. And like you said, foreshadowing. Foreshadowing of uh, kids operating on him. Mm -hmm. I think, and this is just me, maybe you will agree, but this is the closest we've come to a Twilight Zone episode. You're talking about about It's a Good Life, the one with uh, Billy Mummy with the, the cornfield? Well, that I'm just saying, like the feel of a Twilight Zone episode. The other ones didn't feel like Twilight Zone episodes. It, it, it does, but it feels like they ripped off that one, though. I don't. There's call a it there's off. a scene in Iowa where they're they, where he's doing a speech somewhere, and he's next to a cornfield. I, I still think they're homages, I don't, but I, but it feels like they kind of took that episode and retooled it because everyone's doing what this kid wants. But do you – sorry, are you not like – you don't like this episode? I did not like this episode so much. It was uh, – the idea of him becoming president was great, but the moment he became president and then nobody cares, nobody's trying to stop him, it's like – But I think that that's what it is in a Twilight Zone episode. Everything is off a little bit. It's Nothing's right. That was way and, off. That was way off though. Well, it's kind of a, a morality tale where – you're looking at Raph and what he did and like some things just shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. 
And he was capitalizing on a kid for his own successes, knowing this was the wrong thing. And then once it actually came to fruition going, oh crap, what have I done? But now he has to live with those consequences. And when the do- the kid doctor comes in and he wants to operate, I'm like, that feels like a Twilight Zone episode. I know it's like ripping off whatever whatever that episode yeah, was. Yeah, it's, it's a good life. <clears throat> but I feel like in all the other episodes, they were doing something different. This one feels the most I, like I, a Twilight Zone episode. I still want it to feel like a Twilight Zone episode, but not feel like they took a Twilight Zone episode and redid it. I kind of want. Uh, I, I I know you're gonna say it'll be Black Mirror if you go down that path, but I want something that's original. With a Twilight Zone, it's hard. Film. That that is really hard to do. You're asking a lot. I think Black Mirror. Well, Black Mirror is its own show. Black Mirror can do it. If Black Mirror can do it, and that's one guy writing all the episodes, do you think multiple people can do it for the Twilight Zone? Yes or no? Then it's just a Black Mirror copy, which is a copy of the Twilight Zone. But which this is a copy of a Twilight Zone episode too. <laughs> it's a remake. Yeah, I don't. I don't want them to remake episodes. I want them to come out with new episodes with the same feel. I feel like this has the same feel. Oh, I, I I have the feel of it, but it still feels like a rehash of an episode we've all seen. I think, but I feel like it's in my eyes, it's better than the ones that came before it. Yeah, it's better than some of them. It's different. Yeah, it starts off differently. I like that. All right. What were you right now? We're at episode four, right? Five. Oh, this is five. Sorry. What would you, how would you categorize them? What was the best so far? Oh my God. Let me pull up. Now I'm going to have to pull up the Twilight Zone um, list. All right. Let me okay. Get- we can, we'll start off the comedian. We had Nightmare at 30,000 feet. We've got Replay, A Traveler, and now Wonderkind. Jeez, they all have good parts, but they also are all weak, in my opinion, in certain spots, too. Um, All right, so. Because all the, the everything, all of them have stuff that I'm like, that's obvious. To me, Um, I'll go with uh, probably Nightmare, Comedian, Wonder Wonderkind, Traveler, and then Replay. Okay. I, I agree with those. That that makes the most sense. I mean, replay is the worst of them all because it was just too cookie cutter. Yeah, too uh, racially but, biased. But uh, but looking at them, I'm not going. Oh my god, that episode is amazing. It's just like, hmm, which one is better? I than will that? tell you that the 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 episodes have been kind of middle of the road for me. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I felt like this one kind of just hit a Twilight Zone feel the most, but. But it may be because it's copying uh, Twilight Zone. Yeah, I want I want a Twilight Zone feel with a totally new idea. Is what I'm hope. That's what I like to see. But supposedly, uh, Jordan Peele has wrote some of these and directed them, and I'm wondering if that's the back half of this. Um, he didn't do any. He's the host on the other ones, but I believe he's wrote or or directed. A few of the ones that are to come. So right. maybe one of those will, will redeem us. I don't know. We'll see. If they do redeem the, us, I want more Jordan Peele. Yeah. All right. So scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate this one? Maybe a 6.5. Oh, and you were like, oh, this is so good. So, okay. I was going 5. So yeah, we're we're down there pretty low on the scale there. So, But we'll have to wait and see for the next five weeks to see what else there is out there and see if it's better or worse than what we've already seen. And of course, Mr. Brian Lee, I want to thank you for being here again. Where can we find you online? I can find me on Twitter or Instagram. Just look for Brian says. And of course we're at sayproductions.com slash sci-fi watcher. You can email us sci-fi watcher at sayproductions.com or drop us a voicemail 774-327-2948. 774-32-SAY-IT. That's it for this Wednesday edition of Twilight Zone Sci-Fi Watcher. Until next week, have a great one.